Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, hi, a very good afternoon. Thank you so much for having taken the time to have joined me in today's webinar. This is Jay, product expert from Manage Engine. So before we get into today's presentation, I have a quick uh, favor that you could do me. What you can do is if you can hear my audio loud and clear, and if you can see my screen clearly, you can make use of the chat window to communicate the same. Just before we get into the webinar, a quick check on the audio and the video. If you can hear me loud and clear, check, check, check. And if you can see my screen as well clearly, all right, just drop me a message on the chat so that I can proceed. Thank you so much for the confirmation, guys. We are all set and we are good to go. Once again, a very good afternoon. Thank you for having taken the time today. So today's topic is going to be on empowering your IT help desk for Active Directory management. So why specifically this topic for the discussion? IT services management for long has been one fundamental function in every organization that is inevitable. That is, you know, many a times is at the center of the organization's IT operations. So that being the case, the biggest drawback or the biggest downside in organizations is the, uh, you know, the advent of growing at a great pace and having multiple applications to toggle between and to work on. So there's no one stop solution that can help you do both your IT services management and your identity access management. The idea behind today's session is very straightforward, simple and uh, clear. All we want to do right now is to bring the functionalities of Active Directory management into your IT services management tool. So it's going to be more like a synergy between two of industry's most reward technologies. One, your IT services management, and number two, your identity and access management. So that is going to be pretty much the agenda of today's session. So during the course of today's session, I'm going to tell you what functionalities, uh, you know, as regards to Active Directory management can be done from your IT help desk, which is uh, certainly service now. All right. So to start with, we'll handle and we'll uh, figure out what challenges that every administrator faces day in day out, especially when it comes to service now administrators. There are a set set of mandatory challenges they face. The first one is the most clumsy one the toggles that the administrators have to do you know to get their job done let's take a very simple example taking the example of user provisioning or user onboarding all right you receive a mail from the hr asking to onboard 10 users and all the new joinees 10 of them are going to not belong to the same department every single one of them is going to have an individual requirement one should belong to the marketing one must be belonging to the uh, sales department so on and so forth so if that's the case the problem starts right there you'll not necessarily create accounts in active directory all right but also go further and are required to create accounts across platforms let's take the case of your google apps your skype for business your office 365 accounts or your exchange mailbox so the list is endless in such instances, many organizations face a big challenge, especially administrators get super stressed out. The reason being, there's got to be consistency in data that gets transcribed across all these platforms. And you pretty much do the same job over and over across all the different platforms. So if we had a very straightforward single window approach to this problem of onboarding, it would definitely save us a lot of time. And not just that, it would kind of streamline the whole process. So the native tools have a very big problem. So if you try doing it 
the Active Directory way. If you try doing it through your Active Directory user and computer's console, the problem again is you can't do all of this at once. You should start off by writing a PowerShell script, something that is as simple as this. I'm just kidding. It is, in fact, complex. PowerShell script, it requires you to get trained in scripting and not just that it, the, the script that I'm pointing to just gets a very basic task done which is just user creation and when it comes to the attributes that you'd want your user to have none of that is covered so the script is going to extend still further if you're doing user provisioning through the active directory you see users in computers console again it's going to be a big challenge all right so the problem here is you receive a request from your HR on your help desk tool and then you toggle to your Active Directory users and computers console. You then go to your Google Apps to provision accounts. You go, go to your Exchange server or your Exchange admin center to provision mailboxes and the list goes on. And the problem again is the tedious toggle that you have to do. You have to navigate between multiple windows. You do not have a straightforward way of getting this specific task done. And not just that, there are two more important challenges. Organizations would want a standard when it comes to naming formats. You'd want a specific naming format to be incorporated, especially when the organizations are scaling up. The problem becomes still bigger and handling duplicates. That is one challenge that we'd not want to face. That's definitely something we'd want to curb at the very start. So we are going to be talking about a holistic approach towards you know, IT management, identity access management, and all of this is going to be possible from your service now help this console, all right? So you receive a request from your HR for onboarding, and you can act on that very same request from your console and get all of that I've been talking about done. So that's what we'll try and achieve today. We'll solve the first challenge of all those toggles, and we'll keep it to just one single window. All right, the next one is more like the uh, offshoot of the first problem. So since there's a lot of manual data handling that you have to do, reading up a mail, figuring out how to go forward with the Excel that the HR sent, getting acknowledgement or approvals from the corresponding uh, department heads, there's going to be a lot of stakeholders involved at any given point in time. And more the number of people involved chances of it going wrong are pretty uh, you know obvious so you'd not want anything of that sort to happen if that is the case that we're dealing with again we need a streamlined approach towards handling this problem and that's exactly what we'll be handling today the next one is one of my favorite challenges so passwords to be managed ha huh. end users and organizations tend to forget their passwords all the time. So this is one big challenge that all of us have, especially right after holidays. You would be flooded with tickets just for password resets. So this is a problem that they themselves can handle, and that's exactly what we are trying to do right here. Keep it simple is what we'd want to do. We want to keep the whole process simple. We are going to let the end users get the provision to make an intelligent password reset request, and all you have to do is just look into the request and approve for the request. Likewise, unlocking locked out users manually instead of doing it, I mean, doing it through the product instead of doing it manually, that's another big challenge we'd want to face today. Okay, going further, Getting password management done, be it password reset or having accounts unlocked is going to be straightforward from your help desk tool, not required you to toggle between multiple windows or you necessarily need not get into your Active Directory to do this task, all right? Given the intense workload that the administrators and IT help desk technicians already have, this is one thing that you can happily strike off your list once you're done integrating this. And then the last one is the most important one. Service level agreements and IT help desks, ha, huh, they are pretty much synonymous. Every single time you receive a ticket with high priority, especially something that has to do, deal with group membership in Active Directory, it's, it's of importance that you get to the job pretty much straightforward. You get it done right away. That's a basic requirement. And why is that? Groups in Active Directory generally are associated with security in the organization. So there could be a user who's gone rogue and the organization wants that specific user to be removed of those critical groups, like say administrators group or domain admins groups right away. If that's the case, the administrators or the help desk technicians can definitely not afford to lose any time and they 
are required to act on it immediately. So the challenge right here would be to get notified, get onto the task, get your Active Directory, figure out the groups having it removed. So the whole thing is manual and it could not just take a lot of time and it could turn out to be stressful because you got to do it manually. So here again, what we are trying to do is streamline it. You receive a request for either addition to or remove from a group. You act on it right away and job done. So what are we going to discuss today? All in all, we'll be talking about integrating your Active Directory to your ServiceNow console through AD Manager Plus. So the plugin that we have to offer, it's an absolutely free plugin. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to quickly share the link to the plugin so that you can get your hands on the plugin and have it incorporated at your end. All right. So three, two, one and on your chat. So that's going to be the URL that you will need to have this specific integration up and running. You can install the uh, application from the store. It's available. What do we get out of this integration? We'll be able to onboard users. So the first challenge of creating users, that's going to be addressed. And if you want to manage users passwords, that can be done. Manage accounts that are locked out. Again, that's going to be possible. Enabling an account right away, you can do that. Doing deep provisioning is going to be a cakewalk. Disabling the user, deleting them, all of that is going to be possible. And especially the most recent addition that we've done to the feature list is adding to a group and removing from group. That again is going to be now flawless or seamless to be precise. So this is going to be our agenda for the day. We'll try and incorporate service now with AD Manager Plus to get Active Directory functionalities into your service now console. All right, that's going to be the agenda. And how are we going to make it possible? We'll get started by setting up the integration, straightforward two step integration, and then we'll actually perform the tasks for the day and see how it goes. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly access this specific URL just so that you are on track and you'll be able to access the plugin and get hold of it. You can quickly search for Active Directory on your ServiceNow store, all right? You can just say Active Directory. <clears throat> and there you go. So the first plugin that you get is the AD Manager plugin. You can quickly uh, install this plugin and get going with the task, all right? So this is as regards to getting hold of the plugin. So towards the end of the session, just for your benefit, I'd be sharing all these details. Do not worry. Now getting into the AD manager side of things. So once this plugin is installed, you go to service now and from service now you'd get an additional menu that says AD manager plus. All right. So this is the functionality that pops up right after you install the plugin from your store. Once that's done, the first step is basic. You got to just set it up. You enable AD manager plus menu. We go on to enable the service catalog for our end users just so that they can make all the AD requests. All right, I'm going to go ahead and enable service catalog. Lovely. Once that's done, you'll have to key in the basic details, which is the server name and the port details where your AD manager product is running. It's, it's a mandatory requirement. You have to enable your MID server as well. Once that's done, we can quickly say submit and authenticate ourselves to establish the first link in this specific, uh, you know, integration. The first side of the handshake where we get the service now to connect with AD manager. Lovely. So the login is successful since like in any handshake, there's going to be two bits to it. The first one is done. The next one is going to be the AD manager side of things. All right. So this is AD manager. Before we get into the integration, a quick overview on what AD Manager is, just so that we're on track. AD Manager is the Active Directory management and reporting solution from Manage Engine. When it comes to AD management, it's an end to end solution that you'd definitely be interested in. Things like user management, computer management, group contact, Office 365 management as well included. So, all of that, including security, your complaints can be met. Especially if you are, you know, worried about your GDPR, that is also solved in our uh, product. We and do complete management as well as tracking, auditing, all of that end-to-end -end is covered. So we've got reports, the top reports that you could probably think of: reports for inactive users, group membership reports, security-related reports, complaints-related reports. All of it come pre-built within the product. So what are we going to do today? Is we're going to talk about an integration. I get to the admin tab. I get to the integrations module and there you go. We've got service now. 
So if you're wondering post installation, if you want to connect your AD manager to your HR database, that again is also going to be possible. Just in case if you're curious as to how this works, just drop me a message. I'll uh, you know send you a response immediately. So we're talking about the service now integration right here. So once the first step of the handshake is done from the service now step, the next one is pretty simple, straightforward. Just key in your service now URL and say test connection. Let's see what happens. There you go. It says successfully connected and updated. That is all. So like magic, under two minutes, we've got the whole integration in place. Installing the application, setting up the integration from the servers now side, getting to AD Manager Plus, and again, configuring the integration. That is all. So we're good to go. So what do we get after this specific integration? If you can see, additionally, right now, I've got something that says user management. All right, that's what I'm curious about. So here there are provisions to create users, deprovision, disable, enable, reset, unlock, and remove groups, and all of this. All right. So what you can do is you can go on with your usual procedure of assigning roles to your technicians. You can specify who gets what access, which technician gets what action, and all of that. And you can also enable the service catalog selectively. You can enable the role selectively and the service catalog access to make a request to all these actions selectively based on the roles that are available, all right? So once that's done, the end user, in this case, let's assume the HR, all right? I'm gonna quickly go ahead and pretend to be the HR. Brendan in my organization is apparently the HR, all right? The ben Brendan wants to make requests for a user onboarding so there's the service catalog there you go so the application is in place the end users got access to the ad management tab and what do we have we've got functionalities we were talking about there's provision to make requests create requests for tasks like you know creating users deleting them disabling them group membership management, unlock and addition and removal from groups. So all those eight critical Active Directory actions that your end users or stakeholders in your organization would want to get hold of, they are in one single tab for you, available for use. So we're gonna start off with the most important one, which is user provisioning. The HR now, myself, I'm the HR, I'm pretending to be the HR right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a user making a request to be precise. All right, there you go. So what do we have right here? We've got a simple form that says first name, last name, password, telephone, title, manager. So all these are basic attributes that the HR is already aware of. When it comes to onboarding, it's important that all these attributes are filled out. It doesn't look really complex or anything it looks pretty straightforward so let's take the example of a user let's take robert all right and the last name is going to be smith lovely all right so I'm quickly going to go ahead and key in a password so Robert Smith is going to be my employee, the new joinee who has to be onboarded. So Brendan, the HR is making a request to the IT to onboard this specific user. The title can be mentioned. Let's say marketing manager. All right, the manager attribute can also be picked at this point in time. I'm just trying to keep the request very minimal. And before I hit submit, there's one thing that you must notice and that's user provisioning 360 degree, the option that's already selected. What exactly are we discussing right here? It says select template. And when I hit on the uh, explanation, it says templates are configurable forms in AD Manager Plus that allow you to preset values to desired AD attributes. So we've got a list of templates already configured in your ad manager plus and all of them are completely customizable to your very specific requirement the default template that's chosen is a 360 degree template and why do we have that chosen because we were discussing about the problem of having users onboarded across different platforms right we wanted users in ad we wanted users in office 365 we wanted g suite users and all of that in one go so the 360 degree user provisioning template can help you do the same all right 
that's the first point about templates but then there's a lot more to it we've got templates for the HR department we've got one for the IT I'm able to see templates for the sales there's even a template for the vendors so pretty much every single possibility or pretty much every single requirement that you could have you can have all of that created as templates in your AD manager and and all you have to do is just select the right template in this case the HR is going to go ahead with a basic request which is provisioning user across the different platforms 360 degree user provisioning and I'm going to go ahead and say submit I'm going to get to the templates module in a while so do not worry I'm going to say submit and yes, so my request has been made successfully. The IT team should have received a request from the HR, Brendan, swapping to my portal to check if I've received the request. Do I have a request? And there you go. I've got a request that says create a user in Active Directory with the following details. Getting into the request, I'm able to see that the request was made by Brendan, the HR. The request was made for creating the user Robert Smith with a specific title, which is marketing manager. All right. So what do we have? We've got a request. And when I say form action, here you go. So all those Active Directory actions that we wanted are in my form context menu. We've got the creation, deletion, disable, reset, unlock, add to group, remove from group, all of that under one single window, which is my form actions menu. So I've got the form context right here. I've got the action right here. All I have to do is just pick the right action, which is user creation. I say create user and yes. So the data gets fetched from the uh, request. In fact, the pro pro password is also encrypted and it's not plain text from the request. It's gotten directly. We've got the template selected. We've got the user details in place. I can key in the mobile number. I can change the uh, title. Since I'm the administrator, I get to do all of that. So the whole process looks simple, but then it does not look really, uh, you know, intuitive. It, 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 it seems super simple that I'm not really sure if robot is going to have all the right attributes, if robot is going to, you know, uh, have all the accounts in place. But then let's go forward and check what happens in the background. I'm going to go ahead and say submit. So the user provisioning process is going to happen in the background. The product is going to communicate with Active Directory through AD Manager Plus and there you go. So Robert Smith has been successfully onboarded and not just that, now Smith also has a G Suite account created at the same time. How was this again possible? That was because we had the 360 degree provisioning template selected. All right, I'm going to get to user creation templates in, in, in a while. Before we get to the user creation templates, I want to show you if the account has been created in Active Directory. So Robert Smith is our user. Getting to my home tab in AD Manager Plus, we've got a provision to search for objects right away from here. I'm going to search for Robert Smith. That's my user. Looking up for Mr. Robert Smith. Just one quick moment. We have Robert Smith. There you go. We've got Robert Smith onboarded. Lovely. And if you can see, the whole Active Directory attributes are under a single pane, are under a simple layout. And here I'm able to see that since the request was made for marketing manager, the title says marketing manager. Exchange mailboxes could be created if need be. Custom attributes can be set. From the general tab, I'm able to see that. Robert's account has been provisioned, but here we have a small problem. So Robert has been onboarded. Robert has got a G Suite account as well. All of that fine. But what if I have a requirement to onboard a user to a specific department with multiple attributes to be predefined? That can be perfectly done. So just to remind you, we were talking about user creation templates. So in AD Manager Plus, there is something called as user creation templates that might interest you. So we've been talking about, uh, you know, templates for different departments. I'm going to quickly open up a template to show you what exactly I'm talking about. Let me quickly open up the uh, marketing department template. So the layout view 
is self-explanatory. We are able to see that the attributes, important ones in Active Directory are laid out in a very simple, straightforward user interface. I'm able to see attributes for contact where I can check the department, the manager details. There are provisions to preset exchange mailboxes. I can have my terminal set well in advance. I can have my Office 365 also configured for directory sync. All of that is going to be possible and there are provisions to have custom attributes as well so when i get into the general tab giving you an overview it's like a form that has all those attributes for this specific department which is the marketing department template which requires to provision user in the marketing department with uh, accounts provisioned across Active Directory, Office 365, Mailbox created, and Skype for Business. So that's the requirement. And from the template, I'm able to see that the description is brief and wonderful. The container is also selected. Ah, oh, great. So that could save me a lot of time. So it already says marketing department. Again, when I get into the accounts tab, I'm able to see the password is filled out and the group membership is also rightly mapped. Groups pertaining to the marketing department. Yes. When I get into the contacts tab, the manager attribute is already selected. The department is specified. The role can be specified from the request and all of that. So templates are going to be your gateway to simplifying Active Directory management. The template that I'm talking about right here is a template for the marketing department. I'm going to show you one more template so that you understand the difference. Let me open up the sales department template. And if you see, the description is different. It says staff sales force. The container says sales department last time it was marketing and when i get into the accounts tab the membership again is going to be completely different it says sales officers it was field officers marketing last time and here it says sales officers so templates are completely customizable and you can have every attribute in active directory pre-specified to a specific requirement here it's the sales department so i have the sales head configure the sales department map right what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back and make one more request from the HR side with the right template this time and see how different the user provisioning process becomes. All right, getting back, making a request for user provisioning. So here, last time it was Robert Smith. So this time it's going to be Ronald Smith. All right. And I'm going to quickly give in a password. The most important thing this time around is I'll have to select the right template. Let me go ahead and say marketing department. I've selected marketing department for the user Ronald Smith with these details. The title not specifying it. Let's see what happens. The manager again is left empty. So all of that I'm doing is I'm being the HR. I'm filling out a basic form with just the basic details saying marketing department for this specific user. Let's say again marketing manager all right and then i'm going to say submit so my request has been successfully forwarded to the it again switching consoles to check if i've received the request okay i've received the request getting into the request to check the details so this time around it's Ronald Smith marketing manager but the template that's chosen this time is the marketing department template all right so I'm going to say create AD user the template is automatically chosen right the department the title the attributes the basic ones are filled out for me I'm the IT administrator right now when I say submit my product is going to communicate with Active Directory through AD Manager Plus and it's going to get all the attributes incorporated. I'm saying submit. So the user provisioning is happening in the background. This time there has to be one difference. All right, we've got the user provision. It says Ronald Smith has been successfully created. Let me look up for Ronald Smith and check if the account got created saying Ronald Smith and there you go. Ronald Smith has been created. Getting in the user account, I'm able to see that Ronald apparently has a description prefilled. Ronald has a container assigned to him or an organization unit that says marketing department. Lovely. When I get into the account tab, I'm able to see that the membership is also filled out. So this could save you from the biggest trouble of you know granting just enough access 
there could be no instances any further where any user in the organization while getting onboarded or being modified gets sanctioned or gets uh, granted you know unnecessary or extra privileges to all those security groups so here since the whole process is streamlined and you do not necessarily need to do anything manually all the details especially security related group memberships are in place the best part is you can always still go into the product and have all of this customized everything is still editable all we want to do is we just want to smoothen the process for you we want to streamline the process for you and give you a head start in the whole process so when i get in the contacts tab the title is mapped the department is mapped rightly and yes the marketing head is also mapped to this specific uh, resource because he's going to be a part of the marketing department so the whole process of user onboarding which could have ideally taken you a lot of time when you were to do one attribute after the other getting one attribute at a time and performing the task instead you've got a uh, straightforward console where the HR made a request with basic details. The admin or the IT help us have to just look into the request, check for its authenticity, and say okay. And like magic, all attributes in Active Directory, all those important ones, can be pre-filled. So the whole template is customizable. Any of those attributes that we are seeing can be pre-specified as per your requirement. All right. So this brings us to the user provisioning. A lot more can be done with user provisioning templates. You necessarily need not restrict yourself with just department specific templates. You can go with case specific templates. If you want access to your vendors, you have trainers in your organizations to be onboarded. You can do all of that. All right. So I leave it to you. You can go on, customize the templates, create your own templates. Let me know if you need any help, you know, in working with user creation templates. User creation templates, you can say create your own template. You'll have a layout view from where you can enable G Suite and Office 365 integrations. The basic uh, administrator privileges can be given uh, under the admin tab. Once that's done, you'll be able to see the logos of those corresponding apps to be provisioned right next to those attributes that are going to be populated across all platforms. You can pre-specify data, you can pre specify the office, you can go on and also have the container pre-filled, you can select your description, you're get, getting into the accounts tab, the password can be altered, group membership can be set, you know, Log on has can also be specified. So you have shift employees. You can have a template de designated or delegated for those shift employees and specify log on hours. Getting into the contact tab, you'll be able to assign department managers and all of that. From the exchange tab, you'll be able to create mailboxes. If you have the mailbox configured, you can get into the depths of it, say every single attribute, specify what has to happen where. And all of this is going to be template based and rest assured, you can uh, make sure or keep 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 your whole process in tab because we've got uh, a audit report that gets you every single attribute that's being modified. So we'll get to the audit reports in a while. So this is uh, an overview of what user creation templates can do for you. All right. So when you're getting your user onboarding done right after the integration is over, make sure that you create your own templates just so that you can give the entire organization a streamlined onboarding process and there are no backlogs for your onboarding process yes that's something that all of us would like to have so a 360 degree user provisioning using templates is what we just saw there are other activities as well for which your end users can make a request for <coughs> excuse me so here again i'm getting back to my service catalog from an end user point of view brendan the end user and making a request for let's say password reset that's one thing that every user would want so password reset request so here the hr is making a password reset request or it could be the line manager or the corresponding colleague who's making a request on behalf of another user so password reset where a new password can be entered all right and then what i have to say is i have to look up for the user let me quickly look up for a john i'm assuming there should be yes just like i thought so i'm going to pick one of them john smith jonathan smith i've selected jonathan smith and what i can do right here is i can make a request all right with this option enabled which is the user must change the password upon next logon so this ensures that the password is authentic the password is uh you know safe as well 
the end user gets to alter the password when they log in with this specific password so that's that becomes mandatory they can't bypass that step just for additional security so we're going to go ahead and make a password reset request for jonathan right here jonathan is selected user must change their password upon next logon and i say submit yes the request has been successfully submitted to the it team and all that the it team right now has to do is just get into the incidents menu check if we've received the request do we have the request for password reset and there you go there's a password reset request so getting into the request i'll have all the data already in place for this specific user the password again is encrypted nobody can see all that i have to do is just right click form context menu say reset ad password and automatically the user selected the pop password data is populated and in fact the user must change password upon next logon attribute is also enabled so that way you'd be able to make a secure password reset so we are talking about a simplified streamlined approach of resetting password i'm going to reset the password for this user i say perfect so here you go so a very straightforward approach towards active directory management where all we want to do is we want to give the end users a provision to perform active directory tasks you know make requests and get going with the streamlined approach of ad management that's all we want to do right now all right so there we have so what i'm going to do is i'm also going to show you one more thing so we were talking about incidents for user provisioning a while back if you are worried if there's if there's a track for this yes there's definitely a track for this so here it says successfully created the user all right so the request was made by brendan it was the administrator who acted upon the request it could be a it help this technician who has the privilege who's got the role assigned that case you'd have corresponding description right here this process was successful so it's logged likewise for every activity that happens through this integration you're going to have detailed logs in ad manager plus all right i'll show you one more case and let's check how the logs look so let's talk about group membership management right here so again group membership management from a security standpoint becomes critical if users have to be removed from a group immediately they have to be so if that's the case then i'm going to quickly make a request the hr wants a specific user to be removed again in this case it's going to be the same john john for some reason has been mischievous has done something wrong so the hr wants john to be removed from all those administrative level groups so let's go ahead and have john removed so i can do two things as a security best practice i can have john removed from all of the groups if i'd want to restrict access immediately to all those groups or what i can do is i can instead make a request a very specific request where i'd get to choose the groups from which john has to be removed so since john is a marketer i'm having him removed from all those critical marketing groups so here marketing managers group and saying so john has uh, data to what campaigns are going to be run and he intends to share it with the competitors that can that can't happen so the organization is removing him from the critical groups that has the data so i say clear group membership and i say submit so the hr is making the request the request is going to go through the request has been submitted for john when i get back to become the administrator impersonate as the administrator i should have got the request there you go it says remove the below user mentioned from the groups so what you can do is since uh, there's a provision to you know set priority there's a provision to assign it to dedicated administrators or help desk technicians you can always work on it in the back end and have this whole thing configured by your requirement so here jonathan has to be removed from field marketing and marketing managers group all right brendan the hr has made the request so i cannot afford to lose any time i'm acting on it right away i'm saying remove from group and here you go so the requester is selected the requester uh, sorry the request was made for jonathan he belongs to the marketing department and the groups that have to be removed are also selected just in case you want to edit it you can always choose to add more groups or remove these groups from uh, the request and remove jonathan of these groups i can quickly say submit and i'll be able to see that jonathan has been removed from these two groups 
and it says successfully modified. So there you go. So when I, what, 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 what did I ideally do? I received a request from the HR for user being removed from a group. All right, that's a very important task. I acted on that task right away. So I've met my SLA as well. And as a best part, as an icing on the cake, what I can also do is since I'm the administrator, I have access to the audit reports in the product that's going to give me a full fledged picture of what exactly has happened. So we've performed a few tasks through this integration and we'd be able to see the status of all those tasks. So here I'm able to see that Ronald just got created. Robert was the first user that I created. So when I get into the details, I'm able to see the account being provisioned with all those AD attributes. Here you go. So Robert pro got provisioned with the basic template, if you can remember. And all we did was just create a G Suite account for Robert. But then Ronald, on the other hand, had more attributes to his account. So like you can see, the manager attribute was set, the membership attribute was set, the department was set, every aspect of the marketing group was in place just because the right template was selected. So any action that you're doing, we just did a modification for Jonathan a while back and we got the two groups that Jonathan was a part of removed. All right. And that again is logged. The best part here is all of this right here. We're talking about the reports are exhaustive. They're going to give you the source, the time when the action was performed, the success failure message, and yes, whatever task we had done. And here we can have the reports scheduled to be delivered to your inbox. You can have a new schedule set up for the report. You can have it delivered at a given span of time. You want it to be delivered on a daily basis. You can do that. You want a specific format that can happen as well. So audit reports are going to give you a full fledged audit report or, a, or, or, or an insight into who's done what. All right. And not just that, we also get into the details, figuring out what attributes have been modified and whether the modification was successful or a failure to give you an overall picture. So we're talking about a holistic approach towards Active Directory Management where your administrator or the help desk does not just get to provision users or manage them, but also keep a tight track on what's happening. So we've discussed so far user provisioning. We saw how password resets can happen. Account unlock is something that's very similar. You can get users or removed or, uh, you know, from a group. Likewise, you can add users to groups, have passwords reset, users disabled. This is something that you'd want to know. So here I'm going to quickly take an example of locked out user. Let's quickly say Robert. So we've got a uh, Robert right here and apparently Robert McGregor's account has been quarantined and the account has been locked out. So you can quickly say select the user, say submit. All right. Since it's the administrator performing the action straight away or the help desk performing the action has gone through straight. Instead, if you want to go through the usual way where the end user makes a request from the service catalog, that can be done as well. So there are tasks right here that are available for requests. You want to disable a specific user. We were talking about John who got a little mischievous. So the HR wants to disable the user John. So looking up for John and making a request to disable John, I'm saying submit. The request has been processed to the IT team. Getting back to check if I've received the request. Do I have a request? I do have a disabled request. So all I have to do is just get into my form context menu, say disable AD user and like magic, the user is going to be off my grid. The user is going to be modified and disabled. So there's one interesting thing that I'll want you to know when it comes to disabling users, just like how we performed a holistic 360 degree user provisioning where the request was simple, but then the action that happened in the background was, uh, you know, intelligent with a lot of attributes being automatically populated. Likewise, when it comes to deprovisioning as well, we have got you covered. So the disable delete policy right here is going to help you do a multi-step deprovisioning. In general, administrators face the problem of doing a clean wipe or a clean deprovisioning. What do I mean? Accounts 
during the course of their life cycle are going to receive multiple accesses they're going to receive accesses to you know critical files in the organization they're going to have accesses to resources or applications so if you want all of that removed in one go when you're deprovisioning a user account you can configure the disable delete policy in ad manager plus you can say delete the home folder you can remove terminal services you can remove your uh, you know roaming profiles you can run in fact a custom script that could be catering to your very specific requirements you want them off specific applications in-house applications you can run your custom scripts and have that removed as well you can delete their office 365 accounts or you know g suite account in one go just like how we let you onboard users 360 offboarding them is also possible the same way in fact this turns out to be very helpful because uh, from a return on investment point of view you have your office 365 licenses managed well likewise if you're just disabling the user again you can revoke licenses you can run custom scripts move them or quarantine them so in this case we disabled john and john would have moved to a specific quarantine ou that i have for disabled users i can do all of this from the disabled delete policy so for this integration to work seamlessly you will need the service now app the store uh, app which goes by the name ad manager you can look up for active directory and you'll have the app all right just in case if you missed the link that i had shared before what you could quickly do is you can access the link that i'm going to be sharing right now just for your information on your chat right now so once you get into this specific link you will have access to downloading the product for free you'd be having a free download right here. You can watch the product overview as well, all right? In case if you're uh, curious about any configuration issues, you can always reach out to us. We are available right here to help you out. Set this integration up, all right? So that is about the integration. So what we've done right now is we've taken a look at the AD Manager Service Now integration. We have st we started off by understanding as to how to get this integration in place, setting up the integration. We just saw how 360 degree provisioning happens. We discussed about smart templates. We did a bit of deprovisioning where we saw users can be deprovisioned across different platforms. We reset password for a few users. We unlocked them as well. And all of this is going to be possible from your users from your IT help desk or your administrator's form context menu. So that's the biggest plus right here, all right? So just a quick recap, the end users are going to get access to a form context menu that will let them do all of this. Group membership management, account creation, deprovisioning, uh, password management, and unlocking account or enabling them, disabling them account control as well. So when you're doing uh, onboarding, it could be a 360 degree onboarding where users can be provisioned in your Office 365. G Suite can be created, mailboxes can be created. If you can see this specific screenshot that I have where I had all of the templates enabled or all of the activities enabled. So here I'm able to see that there was an Office 365 that got created, G Suite provisioned to mailboxes all in one console, yes. Again, you'd be able to perform these actions from your incidents menu. So straightforward, what do you get? User creation, yes, a 360 degree creation, accounts across platforms with attributes also pre-populated thanks to the templates that we were discussing. In case you have questions regarding AD Manager and setting up the templates, just drop a message to me right now and I'll take them, yes. Adding to groups and removing from groups was seamless. In fact, we were able to do it right away from within servers. Now, we had the provision to clear off all the group membership as well. We were able to update users' attributes like we were able to change their uh, passwords, reset their passwords, account uh, that were locked out. We were able to unlock them. Yes, we were able to remove group membership and as well enable disabled users. So all those actions covered thanks to this one specific toolkit. What I'm going to do is again, I'm going to share the link to download AD Manager Plus. The last one that I shared was the app download. If you want to hold, get hold of the AD Manager Plus application, I'd share the presentation with you and you'd be able to, uh, you know, get access to the application as well. All right, so the store, you can say the free trial, you can install, try it out, tell me how it works for you. If you have any issues with the installation or if you want, if you have any doubts uh, as to going further implementing this, we'd be more than happy to assist you. All we want to do is to help you streamline your Active Directory management. And thank you so much for having taken the time through today's session. This is Jay.
your presenter for the day. I'm available at the chat to take your queries. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. For those of you who want a copy of this specific presentation, the video and the presentation deck, just drop me a message right now. I'd be able to share both to you. Thank you. Thank you.